Velez was sentenced for reckless conduct and two counts of witness tampering for his actions in a separate shooting. Police say he shot several rounds at a crowd of people on Lowell Street. No one was injured in that July 8th shooting. New tonight, a Lawrence man will spend 17 years in federal prison for conspiring to distribute heroin and fentanyl. Rafael Lopez Carrasco pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute and possession with the intent to distribute heroin and fentanyl. Now, according to court documents, Carrasco was distributing drugs in New Hampshire and Massachusetts since 2014. Police say a 2015 bust in Manchester led to the arrest under an alias. Cleanup nearly finished at the site on Route 28 where an oil tanker overturned late last year, spilling thousands of gallons of fuel into the ground and creating a hazard. The process has been ongoing now for more than a month. But as WMUR Sharice LeClaire tells us, there is some good news for drivers who commute in that area. Well, for weeks now, drivers coming down Route 28 have seen this or had to take a detour because of this cleanup. Now, we have learned from the Department of Environmental Services that this phase of the project is almost complete, but there's still much more to come after this. Orange cones and heavy machinery still line this section of Route 28, where an oil tanker tipped back in December. Since then, a cleanup that was expected to only take a couple of weeks has swelled to over a month. Jim Martin with DES says there's good reason the process is taking so long. We learned afterwards that the tanker sustained uh, much more damage during the accident and all of the fuel was lost. And so that's why we estimate that the full load of 11,000 gallons of uh, gasoline and diesel fuel was lost. Since the spill, about 2,500 tons of contaminated soil has been removed from this patch of land in the hopes of keeping the contaminants out of the groundwater. In that time, cars have been detoured off this area of Route 28. And so far, four personal wells in the area have been tested. We have results back for two of the four residents, and thankfully right now it doesn't look like their wells have been impacted. Once the soil cleanup is completed, this area will still need to be monitored for years. A spill of this size is not common in New Hampshire. Uh, we're working as quickly as possible to try to contain the site. Now this phase of the project should be wrapped up next week week, but then they will be putting in monitoring wells, which they will be monitoring over the course of years. In Londonderry, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Tonight, three people are recovering after a head-on collision in Dover. The crash happened this evening in front of St. Thomas Aquinas High School. The fire department says a minivan and SUV crashed head-on. One person had to be extricated. Three people were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Well, the Trump administration is working to revise some of the recent Russian sanctions. Right now, American companies cannot export some electronic equipment to Russia today. The U.S. Treasury Department says it will allow some companies to do limited business with Russia's Federal Security Service. It changes a sanction put in place at the end of the Obama administration that limits business to $5,000 for any calendar year. New tonight, a third congressional committee will investigate Russia's interference in the 2016 presidential election. Today, Senators Lindsey Graham and Sheldon Whitehouse announced that the Senate Judiciary Panel that they lead will investigate. The senators say the goal of the investigation is to, quote, shine a light on Russian activities to undermine democracy. Well, good news for the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Senators Shaheen and Hassan announced today that it will be exempt from the federal hiring freeze. The clarification from the Defense Department comes after calls for an exemption. And earlier this week, the senators announced legislation to protect naval shipyards after President Trump's federal hiring freeze. All right, we're on now to Super Bowl 51, a very busy day for the New England Patriots, and the countdown is on for Sunday's big game down in Texas. So let's head down to Houston, where we find our Jamie Staten. Jamie? All right, Tom, welcome live to Houston. Over one shoulder, the old Houston Astrodome, no longer used for professional sports. Over the other shoulder, NRG Stadium, site of the Super Bowl on Sunday. Let's take a look at some more video of NRG Stadium. Built in 2002 at the price tag of $352 million, it's home to the Texas Livestock Show and Rodeo and also big time country music concerts. Sunday, 72,000 fans will be watching the Super Bowl. 16% of those tickets going to the New England Patriots for their fans. Speaking of those Patriots, now let's switch gears and look at them as they held their press conferences today. This was significant because this 
this is the last time they had to talk to the media. That's it. After two weeks of press conferences and interviews with the press, they finally put that behind them and they can move on now and really just focus in on Super Bowl 51 come Sunday. You're going to be done with the media after this. You're one step closer. How's everything been going for you this week? It's going to be awesome when I'm done with the media, man. I love you guys, but um, I think we're all wearing out our welcome here. So it'll be good to, you know, to, to have fun with these interviews and, you know, focus on the game. I try to keep all that excitement bottled up until it's time to play. Um, it's really not going to help you if you, you're pumped up to play right now um, a couple days away from the game. So um, just relaxing, getting the game plan in, and uh, – I'll be excited to play, you know, come Sunday. One step closer to the Super Bowl. Yeah, kind of, uh, you know, just get to really focus on football these next couple of days and kind of cross our T's, dot our I's, and, and uh, you know, just prepare as best we can. So the Patriots practiced in 75-degree weather today. Sounds terrific, but keep in mind, they've been in the cold weather of New England for the last couple of months. This was a big change. It is something they are a little bit concerned about, the heat for the Super Bowl on Sunday. We'll talk more about that later in sports with Jason King. Live in Houston at the Super Bowl, Jamie Staten, News 9 Sports. And stay with us all weekend long for live reports from Houston. Jamie will be there through Sunday for complete coverage of the Patriots in Super Bowl 51. Well, a big honor for an awesome teenager who's faced adversity for most of his life and the hope is that his story will influence others. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Peterson, your member. On this signing day for elite athletes across the country, a very special draft day ceremony at St. Joseph's College in Maine. This 13-year-old from Ossipee is becoming an official member of the men's lacrosse team. A huge honor for the teen who's been battling several heart conditions since birth, even receiving a transplant at the age of 10. We're truly honored to have Josh uh, join our team. Um, he's a true inspiration for uh, how to live our lives. Team members rallied around Josh at the event organized by Team Impact, a national nonprofit which matches children with life threatening and chronic illnesses to college athletic teams. Josh fielded press conference questions like a pro. Question over here What's your favorite movie? Fast and Furious. The team's coach says Josh is actually the role model for his athletes. As a coach, when I'm recruiting, uh, Athletes, we look for certain qualities, perseverance, mental toughness, great work ethic, and courage. Um, I think it's, it's pretty obvious when you hear a story that, that this young man tonight, uh, he exudes all those characteristics. Josh will be attending the team's practices, games, and events. The coach hoping this young man's courage will inspire everyone around him. If we could take into account what Josh has been through and what he's been able to accomplish, I think that's going to help us you know, gain a lot during the season as well. <laughs> and again, Josh will be shadowing the team as much as he can during the upcoming season. Great story. Uh, tonight, a rare look at the Granite State's team, the Granite State team responsible for keeping us safe from major threats, including biological, chemical, and even nuclear weapons. Coming up on News 9 tonight, see the technology being used to identify and respond to hazardous threats right now. And say hello to the Cook Quads, how babies and mom are doing tonight just hours after being welcomed into the world. Sunshine for some tomorrow, but do we see bright skies over the weekend? The forecasts including changes for next week coming up. Well, tonight, more than 40 federal agencies and departments are securing the Super Bowl, including a military team that monitors the air that fans breathe. Each state has its own team, including New Hampshire, which sent its team to guard the AFC championship game. The National Guard civil support team keeps people safe, even though you may not see them. Tonight, WMUR's Gene Mackin got an inside look at their technology and their training. 